Here we go. All right. So first I want to come in and find the document or our, our, um, our agenda for the day. Can everybody, am I actually sharing now? Share. And let's see here. I am looking for this document. Can everyone see this, uh, the agenda for today? Yes. Okay. So one of the things you, this was in our calendar invite, and I'm actually going to uh, share a link right now um, in the chat so that you can access all of these things should you need to. Um, that way, if you can, you can be doing some updating as we're going. So let me see if I can get back to the chat for a second. This is a link to that agenda, okay? So um, one of the things I would like each group to do, if you haven't already, there is a roster here for both affiliates. So if you come in and click on that, there are some holes and question marks that I didn't have as far as the actual term, start date and things like that. Just verify that I have the correct email and the best phone number. It often helps if it's a cell just to get to you easier. So if a, a board member is trying to reach you, um, that's a lot easier. So both of them are on there. Here's, uh, that was the CBA and here's the DC version. So if you could just verify your information there, that would be helpful. Um, two other documents that are in here and you will see them. Um, I will share, if I haven't already, I think I have a link to each of you that is a board um, resources folder and documents like our bylaws are in there. I recommend that you take a look at this, review it. You don't have to memorize it or anything, but it does help to know like our procedures, especially if you take a look at um, the things for voting and uh, responsibilities for board members. So that would be helpful. And then you can also take a look at our policy manual. This is how we handle pretty much everything. Um, there's a table of contents. So if you ever have questions about how something is being handled, you could come here, like for example, voting by email for our board and things like that, just to find out if we're following our procedures correctly. So those two documents are in a board resources folder that you will have access to. For the purpose of today, I want to focus on um, the documents that are in here. Again, those bylaws and policy manual are here. Um, we are going to go over this top one. Um, and then there are some other ones that you may want to take a closer look at on your own time. But um, we'll start here with uh, just a general um, orientation of rights and responsibilities and kind of how we operate. So, um, I don't know if you know, but our mission is to be the most trusted resource where homeowners and remodeling professionals alike turn for inspiration and information. Um, there are certain things that we want our board members and committee chairs or just leaders in general uh, to be aware of. We would um, we have a pro pledge and code of ethics that is in our on our website. I will also drop um, a copy of that into the board resources folder. But we would like you to know and of course adhere to that as we ask of all members. Board meeting or meeting attendance. Um, at the end of each meeting, I try to get the minutes to everybody within 24 hours while it's fresh in your mind. Then we review them there. And so then at the next meeting, we take a vote and you aren't trying to review them during the meeting. So in any time those are sent to you, you'll be asked for any additional comments or edits. Um, sometimes I may not capture something correctly. The most important thing for you to look at too is your attendance. Um, everybody's name is listed. If you weren't in attendance, I strike through you. So if you just wanna verify that each um, for each meeting as well. As leaders, we would love for you to be present and um, participate in pro events and programs. Um, and we ask you to register. If, uh, if you would prefer a staff member register you, you can reach out to uh, Debbie Kane in DC and Deborah Carter in Central Virginia, and they will easily get you registered. Um, let's see. 
when you were doing daily business, we asked that you advocate on behalf of pro, um, basically just at anything you're doing, business functions, civic functions, um, and then just do your part to enhance our public image. Um, then we will look to our leaders to pro, um, provide input on our strategic plan. We did our last strategic planning session. We do small ones each year and every other month as a board, we do strategic planning. Um, so we'll be asking for your help with just um, constantly updating our strategic plan to make sure we're doing the best we can for our members. Um, Preparing for meetings, often I will add the agenda in the um, calendar invite or I'll send it out by email. I was a little late getting it out um, this this time. I had a shingles vaccination. It made me feel pretty cruddy. So I didn't end up doing as much on Friday as I'd hoped to. Um, and then, as I mentioned, reviewing those um, meeting minutes post-meeting. Uh, figure out where you can be most helpful. You don't have to be everything to the board and to everybody, but there might be things that are a great skill set, like Jeremy is a really good uh, financial numbers person. So he often, you know, was that was a great fit for him as treasurer, and I'll lean into him probably even now that he's out of that seat. Um, we ask that you're constantly looking for new members for PRO and uh, future leaders. Like if you're a committee chair, you're going to be a perfect person to see who those committee members are that might be a great um, leader in the future. Um, what we discuss in board meetings and even in committee meetings is confidential information. And so um, keeping that is very important. Um, sometimes you may be tempted to mention something that was discussed in a board meeting with general members, but the problem is, is they don't have all of the background information. So I have seen that get um, a little sticky. So it's just important to, um, you know, keep what is discussed in the boardroom there. Um, assumed authority. This is a, a word with, um, with uh, boards and nonprofits. Um, people see you as a pro leader and therefore they assume you have certain knowledge um, and authority. So just be sure that if you are speaking on behalf of the organization, you're making sure that it's something that has been approved by the board. Um, if not, I would direct people to me or to John Tabor or Scott Wagner as presidents of um, and executive director of the local groups. Um, any questions on those? Top few items first. Oh, sorry. Hold on one second. Sam Rust is trying to get in. I do not like the admit thing when I am trying to run the meeting. I don't know if anybody else can um, do that or if I'm the only one. So let's just see. Sorry. Is he in? Hi, Sam. Sorry about that. Okay, um, let me make sure he's in. Okay, so um, in nonprofits, we talk about the three Ds. These are duties of our board of directors, especially, but also of our um, other leaders like committee chairs. We have a duty of care to actively participate in planning and decision making and making informed decisions. So treat it like it's your business be knowledgeable of what's happening. Sometimes newer members of a board feel like, or even our newer committee chairs feel like they they don't have the um, tenure to speak up and they kind of, you know, lay low for the first few months. We want you to realize that it's very important for all of you to be active, to feel like you have a voice and to ask questions if something doesn't make sense duty of loyalty when acting on behalf of the organization um, put that the interest of the association before any personal or professional ones um, and avoid any conflict of interest i do have a conflict of interest um, form that i would like each of you to review and then duty of obedience board members um, it, just always ensure that any decisions that you make are complying with our um, state laws are 
the most important thing is that we're complying with our bylaws. And I try to make sure that everyone understands what our bylaws require. We can do almost anything in a nonprofit as long as it's in our bylaws and it meets um, state and federal uh, regulations. Fiduciary responsibility. Um, we are in charge of the finances of this organization. Um, and so having oversight, asking questions um, when you're evaluating policies, approving budgets, um, doing uh, our financial reports, et cetera, and then just protecting our assets for our members. Um, and that's very important. So again, don't hesitate to speak up and ask questions if something doesn't look right. Sometimes it may just be an oversight or a mistake, but somebody has to catch it. So be the hero. Um, insurance, uh, just so you know, we do uh, carry all um, required insurance, directors and officers insurance. If you serve on any board that doesn't have directors and officers insurance, you should encourage them to uh, take care of that. As a um, volunteer, our, our states have a lot of protections for uh, volunteers. However, if something, a case is brought, that insurance helps to cover the legal expenses. Um, so we make sure we always have that. We have general liability and workers' comp insurance. And now we're adding, now that we have more employees, we're adding a few other um, types of insurance to make sure we're covering our employees completely besides just general workers' comp. Any question on the your duties as a board member or, or committee leader? You're a quiet bunch. All right. Um, board meetings, both Central Virginia and D.C. will follow the same schedule. Um, we meet every other month with the full board and committees. And that month we have committee reports, about five minutes, um, unless a committee has something really big going on. Like if it's award season, the awards committee may take longer than their allotted five minutes. Um, and so we meet, uh, you know, January, March, and every other month with the full board um, and staff. Then on alternate months, the executive committee, which are our officers and our financial committee, they meet for an hour. And then the board without committee chairs meets for strategic a strategic session. It just helps us instead of every meeting being a reporting that we can get some input and start thinking about things we want to do without having to wait for a strategic planning thing every other year or so. So it's been very healthy for us. Um, Sometimes we adjust the schedule or we may have special meetings uh, when we need to vote on something and that we give 10 days notice. The board can waive that notice. So accepting the meeting invite waives a notice for that. Or we may ask, can we waive the notice? Does everybody get the invitation? Can everybody attend? And we can you can also um, so put in a proxy vote. Um, again, speaking up, you were elected to represent the members. So as a member, you have every right to ask questions and make sure that you're comfortable with how we're operating. Voting procedures. We have um, either in-person or virtual voting, or we can sometimes vote by email. In-person voting, um, in order for a vote to happen, someone has to put a motion on the floor. Um, and then it has to be seconded by another um, voting board member. Then the president will call for discussion. And that is your time to ask any questions and make sure that you fully understand the motion on the floor and share your opinion about it. Um, and then finally, the president, president will call for a vote. You can either vote yes, no, or abstain, yay, nay, abstain. Um, and then the decision is made by a majority vote. Um, if you feel like you have a conflict of interest, you can recuse yourself from the vote. You can recuse yourself from the conversation if you'd rather. And sometimes we will um, recuse you if we know there's some sort of conflict or the vote has something to do with you or your company. You can, of course, abstain from any vote at any time, especially if you feel like you don't have um, the sufficient information or an opinion in the matter or you just want to defer to the other members of the board to make that call. Um, email voting. 
Um, for an email vote, a lot of times we'll do that. Uh, we may say that we'll fix something on, you know, maybe we're doing a financial report and the board has asked something to be fixed or updated. Once that is done, we typically will send it out for a quick email approval. Um, so if we do that, participating in the email um, vote implies or discussion implies your consent to vote by email. However, if for any reason you are not comfortable with a vote being held by email, you can request request an in-person or video conference meeting for the vote. Um, in this voting method, a motion is presented by the email and each board member is asked to reply all with any comments, questions, or their vote. So it's a little different procedure, but it's just more efficient and our bylaws allow it. Any questions on voting? Committee chairs and other volunteer leaders will be asked to provide a committee or task group reports to the board. Again, every other month, we like to get at least a brief update. The focus of that really should be just a, a highlight of what your committee's up to. Anything that you need from the board or the staff, um, that's a great time to, to share that. It shouldn't be a full discussion though, kind of like a secondary committee meeting. These reports, um, there is a committee report. You'll see that in the orientation documents and it can lead you through so that you can um, supply those in writing. It just makes my job a lot easier when I go to include it in the meeting minutes if I could just um, put in a link to that report document. But committee chairs, any questions on that? So if we haven't sent you a report, um for this meeting, for example, Angela, is that something we should do after the meeting? If you can, if not, you can always submit it like the day of and I'll like fo immediately following the um, the meeting, I can always just add it to the minutes. So it, we're pretty lax about that. It just is really helpful to get them in writing. And mm -hmm. then each committee has a staff liaison and your staff liaison should be able to help you prepare those reports. So try not to feel too pressured by any of that. Okay. Any other questions about committee chairs reports? Okay. Several of you will be running meetings, especially committee chairs, and there are numerous ways to do it. And we don't have to be so strict um, at the committee level. What we ask um, is to set clear goals for the entire year. Um, your term. So two to three goals that you want to achieve during your term. And if you have questions about the direction or goals of your committee, you can seek advice from the board, your staff liaison, or myself. Um, budget. Once you set those goals, we ask that you turn in a budget request for funding for any of those initiatives. We um, set our budget. We're a July to June fiscal year. So we set our budget in like May. So usually committees come on in that first month or so, they're determining what are their goals and initiatives. And then by March, at least trying to get me um, any sort of budget request to, to cover the cost of those. And then that's approved by the board. So we can get um, budget exceptions approved outside of the fiscal year if it's an urgent request. Like if, say, membership committee wanted to start a campaign and we hadn't budgeted for it, you could request that as long as you could kind of show the return on the investment to the board. They usually are very good about approving those. Um, so that can be, budget exceptions can be submitted anytime throughout the year. Any questions on that? And we recommend, um, I know in DC, we have very set schedules for committees because we have several, we don't want them meeting at the same time. So we recommend setting a meeting schedule, like, you know, we meet on the third Monday of the month at 10 a.m., you know, and then just being consistent and having um, your staff liaison set up those recurring calendar invitations for you for the year, if possible, or at least the quarter. Um, communication. Each volunteer group has an email group. We've updated those. Um, so there's like a board email group for DC, a board email group for Central Virginia, a membership committee for DC and for Central Virginia. So that just helps us kind of track those communications 
and um, keep our groups kind of working off the same information and making sure everybody's included in receiving those. And that's where I will go to distribute um, agendas and meeting minutes. Um, for committees, uh, I recommend either having your staff liaison or a volunteer from your committee take notes during the, the meeting. Um, and those will serve as your meeting minutes, basically just recording action items and any decisions that were made. You don't have to like word for word um, transcribe the, the committee um, discussions. Um, preparation, uh, as always with everything, when you're prepared, it shows. Conversely, you know, it's, people can tell when we're winging it. And I've seen committees who, you know, start off you know, very organized and they just seem to function better throughout the year. And then some that just don't have a set agenda, their, their members kind of get used to that and they may not show up as frequently. Um, and then let's see, I, I said, um, of course, as a committee leader, try to be there before your committee shows up and your, I'll ask your staff liaison to do the same. Um, Min we talked about, you know, recording attendance and action items and minutes from your meetings, um, getting others involved like, you know, uh, it helps to not only just be reporting, but to, you know, really get input from your committee members. And um, I will say Michael Sorry, as our president in D.C., is really good about pulling in those folks that are a little quieter. They may not speak up as easily, but they often have great things to say once someone takes the time um, to ask them their opinion. So, again, you know, all of this, our goal is to, like, make this something that's enjoyable for our members to be a part of. So trying to keep it light and being respectful of people's time. If if we are um, if you've covered your uh, items for the agenda. Don't feel like you need to keep them on for the whole thing, but, you know, just be respectful of people's times, use time wisely, and I think you'll find it helps. Um, and then if you ever need anything, of course, uh, each committee uh, will most likely have a staff liaison, and some will have a board or officer liaison, and I'm always there to help if you need anything. Any questions on the, just the general rules and guidelines? Okay. This, hey, Angela. Yes, sir. Um, for the committee level, do you want the staff liaison to uh, be invited to the at the committee level? Yes. So that would, and mostly Deborah and I are going to be the ones um, organizing your meetings, Evan. So we're always going to include ourselves in that. There will be some months as she kind of comes on, I may stop being involved in each of those just because of my crazy schedule, but yes. And also, how are the chapters doing uh, financially? Are we pretty sound? Yes, we are. Um, this is kind of a, a unusual period um, we're in right now. Most of our income, because we do an annual um, renewal thing, we're getting an influx of cash. Um, but everybody is doing doing really well, Central Virginia especially. Um, DC's behind a little bit in membership recruitment, and we'll work on that. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Okay. So in this, all of these um, items here are there for you to peruse. This one, um, again, kind of goes into greater depth about those three Ds. And this was put together um, by our attorney. We have a, a, um, an attorney who does work for us kind of pro bono. Her name is Judith Ittig. And if you ever like the one of the things I, I experienced this firsthand with the National Board for NARI, um, if you ever find that there is a concern and you've come to me, you've gone to your local president and you're just not feeling like something is kosher, you really do have um, the right and authority to reach out. And our attorney is right here. Um, and you literally can contact her and say, I'm, you know, this is what's happening. I'm a little concerned. What, what, should, what should my next steps be? Okay, so this is a good document to um, to review on your own, but it's a lot of what I mentioned uh, before with the three Ds. 
Um, expectations, again, these are a lot of things I've already covered. Knowing your rights and responsibility, adhering to our code of ethics, knowing our policy manual and bylaws, at least review it one time. Um, we encourage you to um, attend a minimum of 75% of our board and regular um, and other meetings, but we understand you're all busy and some of you have children with after school activities and things like that. So just letting us know um, if you can't be there, that's that's the most important thing. Um, and then let's see. Um, I think we've covered all of these other things. Again, the confidentiality. This document here is one that I do like to get signed and returned just because it covers so many of the things, including that confidentiality moment. Okay. So um, document three, I am actually going to share that in the chat. And if you don't mind um, getting that back to me at your earliest convenience would be great. And let's see here. All right, going back. Um, let's see what else is in here. There's the bylaws, the policy manual. Here's the conflict of interest policy that I was mentioning. Um, and that just will help clarify that you understand how that works as well. So again, this is another document that I would like you to um, to return to me and I will file all of those for you in your in a board folder. All right. Let's see here. Done. And back to here. I um, just note, yes. Angela, mm -hmm. um, should we just copy those? And because like right now it's we can't type on those. Yes. Yeah. It's viewer only. So if you don't mind just printing okay. those, signing them and then getting, if you see me in person, you can get them that way or scan an email or take a picture of it and um, send it over. Okay. Thanks for asking. Can they be scanned together? So it's yes. all one document. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, this Wednesday and next Wednesday, we are having our officer induction um, ceremony in Central Virginia is this week and next week is the DC one. So um, this may be something too that you would like to familiarize yourself with. Um, this is the ceremony and basically I will go through, um, I will induct the new chairman of the board or have the past chairman do it. John, in your case, since you're taking over president, I'll induct Michael as the chair and then the chair will induct the rest of the board. Um, and so it's very short little thing, but basically after the statement, you'll answer, we will. So you can review that as well. Um, put that in. And then let's see what else. Rules of engagement. We use this a lot at meetings um, as provided by um, one of our board members. So I always think, you know, we can get into some discussions that get um, a little, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, they might be a difficult discussion. So just ensue, assume positive intent, engage in the dialogue, but not a debate. Um, and then hold yourself and others accountable for demonstrating cultural humility. I think our presidents do a really good job of making sure everybody um, treats each other respectfully, but these are just easy to, to review, but you know, it's okay if we feel a little discomfort in having a discussion. I think our society has gotten away from that. So, you know, people can have a different opinion and then we'll, we'll hear all the voices at the table. Um, and just remember it, your voice is important and we want to make sure everybody is speaking up. Um, and then finally, the last thing in here is this committee um, report. And basically it will let you know, is there something you need a board vote for? Um, and then you can just, you can tailor this for your committee and save it and then just turn it in each month. But, you know, just let us know, what are your three goals for the year? Any action items that um, are, you know, current or coming? Is there any sort of request for staff or board help? Um, and then is there a motion that you're requesting from the board? And then a, a board member can put that motion on the floor. 
And so anyway, um, is there any information that needs to be disseminated to the membership and that, you know, will just help us? So these are kind of the things we're looking for in those committee reports to the board. All right, let's see here. I'm going to stop sharing and bring it back for discussion and questions. Um, those of you who've been on the board for a while, are there things that I'm not mentioning that I should? Can you think of anything that you would think they would, might find helpful? I nailed it. I think that's pretty I'm just glad pretty that you had this, Angela. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that I've participated in anything like this before. So this is a great start to the new year. Oh, good. Yeah, I think that it's important for us to start off as we intend to go, knowing our rights and responsibilities. I think it just helps board members come in and committee leaders come in and feel like they know what they're doing. They're empowered to do their job from day one. So um, again, I am here to answer any questions. If something seems weird or ask another board member, you know, or committee chair. And I, um, one of the things that we're gonna implement this year is quarterly uh, committee chair meetings with just the, uh, the leaders of those committees. And we may combine it to where it's both DC and Central Virginia, which really helps to to um, understand what maybe one group is doing in Central Virginia or what DC is doing for awards, you know, it's, we think that'll help us to like align some of our things and work together instead of it being so, um, you know, compartmentalized and one committee's working over here without really knowing what someone else is doing. So that's kind of a new initiative for this year as well. All right, um, Central Virginia leaders, I may see if y'all mind if we move to a virtual meeting on Wednesday, Deborah Carter's out of town helping her ailing mother, and I have a packed day. So I was hoping she would be in charge of things like lunches, et cetera. So do, Scott, is that okay if we move that meeting to virtual? Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll, I'll get that out today. All right. Any other questions? Angela, can you put in the chat the link to the document for the roster for Central Virginia and us for the leaders and everybody that's on the calls. Yes, yes. I actually let me do this. I'm going to put the entire um, that agenda has all of those live links, so I can link to that, and I think that'll be cover everything you need there. Okay. So let me just share this, um, and then all of those other links are right there for you. Okay. And if that doesn't work, let me know. Okay, Debbie. Thanks. Libby, how you doing, lady? You feel good. good. Got all the documents. All fine. Print it out. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. Okay. Well, we've got uh, the DC meetings coming up in a little bit. So I'm going to let everybody go unless there are any other questions. That's perfect. All right. Thanks. And Justin, thank I know you, Angela. Angela. Thank you. Justin, thank you. Justin, I owe you a phone call. I'll get to you. It's just, you know, first of the year. No problem there. No problem. We'll see everybody on Wednesday evening here in Central Virginia too, right? Yes, at Closet Factory. Um, it'll be great. So, right. Sounds hey, good. Quirrell, you snuck in on me. I didn't see you come in. All right, everybody, have a great day. If anybody Thanks. needs to stay on for anything, I'll be here for a minute. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Angela. Great Thanks. job, Thank Angela. Angela. Thanks, guys. Angela, I had a quick question. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, the meetings that are coming up for the board and whatnot, are they already pre-scheduled or are they not so much? Yes, but if we need to change them, that's one of the discussions I need to make sure. Mm -hmm. We usually meet on the first Monday of the month. This um, meeting, I think, I don't know if this is the actual, we didn't meet last week, of course, because it right, was right. new, but, um, and we meet usually from 11 to 1 on my, the first Monday of the month. Is that going to work for you, Bob? Yeah, no, it's fine. I just, you know, the earlier you get it on your calendar, right. the easier it is to protect the time, right? Yes. And I think I have sent the invites for the year for the DC and Central Virginia boards. But if you okay. don't... I'll look. Okay. If you don't see that, let me know and I'll resend them. Okay? okay. Yep. Thanks very much. I'll see you later. Thanks, for Bob. Clarif for clarification, I have 
somehow in my uh, calendar a reminder for the DC board. I don't think I you want you wanted me here, not for the DC one, right? No, you are on the DC board, and so that was is your meeting as well. Okay. Are you are you okay to attend that? I sure. can always record it. You know what? Let me stop this recording too. I don't need to. Sorry about that.